Hello everyone and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Oliver Draper, CTO for COP, and what we're going to look at today is how to draw an accurate line crossing detection on a height vision IP camera. Well, so I'm just going to log into this uh, camera now with the uh, details that I've already previously configured. And this has taken us straight to the uh, live view of the uh, image now. So as you can see, this camera is currently pointing to our car park. Uh, and this is simply just a height vision bullet camera. Uh, it's color view on, hence the 7 and the G2 means second generation. And the LSU-SL indicates this has got live guard in there as well. So this is a flash of light and shout at someone in the scene as well. So go into configuration at the top, first of all. And then to the left-hand side, we're going to go to our event. Now this is about the line crossing that we're looking at today. So line crossings are found under smart event. And at the top, we've got our various smart events, sudden scene change, intrusion, line crossing, region, entrance, and exiting. But today, we're looking at line crossing. So when we're going to line crossing, uh, we can see our scene currently. That is a live image at the moment. And all we do, first of all, is we click detection area. That then places the line on the screen. You simply click, drag, and move that line to your preference of wherever you want your line to actually be. Now, for the line crossing, obviously, we're looking for a target to go across the line. Now, below here, we've got the option for our target detection, human, vehicle, or both. So this camera has what's called AccuSense technology, where it can detect if it's a human or vehicle in the scene. Now, it does this by a method of simple shapes, uh, basically the head, body, arms, and legs of a person that determines that to be a, a, a human. Likewise for a vehicle with the wheels and the, and the shape of the vehicle, etc. Now, it can recognize a person and a vehicle from all different shapes and angles. Uh, it is a form of AI. Now, the accuracy of AccuSense is around about 80% accuracy, so it's fairly good. But there's still those occasions for false alarms. Uh, and we need to understand uh, how this algorithm is working. As I mentioned, it is going off simple shapes. So if you can imagine, for example, a, a cat or a dog walking square on straight towards a camera, it sees head, a body, and two legs sticking down, and there is the distinct possibility that that might trigger a false alarm based on that simple shape of a, of a, of a cat or a dog walking straight towards the camera. So how can we reduce these false alarms? Well, we have the options here for maximum and minimum size. So if I click the minimum size uh, box, I can draw a box on the scene of what my minimum size target is. And I'm simply saying anything smaller than that minimum size object do not trigger the line crossing event. And then I could do the same for my maximum size as well. So I draw a box about this size. So anything bigger than that, do not trigger. So I can then just play around with these size of boxes. It is useful at this point if you have a, another colleague to stand in the scene to give an, a reference of the minimum and maximum size. Ideally, you want someone to stand the furthest away from the camera as possible. Or look, just by chance, we've got some people here. So as we're walking across the line crossing, I can see, yep, yeah, that minimum size box there fitting just inside that one. If I want the line to trigger right at the distance where the actual white car is, I might want to reduce it down just a little bit further. And likewise, my minimum size, my maximum size box, sorry, if I can imagine them being as close to the camera as possible, I would like to think they're not going to go any bigger than the maximum size box. So this is therefore helping reduce these false alarms. These boxes don't have to go anywhere in particular on the scene. They're just acting as a scale reference for the camera to have an understanding of this. And then below here, we've got the A and B. So you can see it's got an arrow pointing both to A and B. What that's indicating is the direction of travel for this line crossing. So I'm saying I will accept the actual object to go A to B or B to A, either direction. However, I want it to only trigger one way. So, for example, if I'm interested in people coming towards uh, the car park over here in the distance, I can say actually only when they're traveling from B to A, don't want the lines to be crossed. Because I'm not really mithered if they're going that direction. This can be useful for residents, driveways and things where they're not bothered about someone leaving the driveway but they are about coming onto the driveway. So you can set your direction of travel there, depending on what you are uh, wanting. In this example, I'm going to go both direction. And then below here, we've got the sensitivity. Now, the sensitivity is referring to how much of the object go across the line before it triggers. Now, by default, this is set to 50%, meaning at least half of the object has to go across the line before it triggers. So if someone just steps their foot across that line, but most of their body stays out of it, that will not trigger that line crossing. Now, this leads me on to another important point. Because the camera is working out a percentage of target, it has to see the entire object in the scene before the object triggers that line crossing. 
So let's take a look at this. What would happen then, do we think, if I put my line right up against the edge of the scene over here, like this? And then I said I want my direction of travel to be A to B. Well, looking at this at the moment, the person could not appear in the entire scene fully before they've gone across the line. Therefore, by the time the person's crossed the line, the camera's not been able to work out their uh, size of object and whether that is a valid target or not. So that will not trigger. We cannot have line crossings too close to the edges of our scene. They've got to fall within the middle. We need to make sure that, again, the entire camera can see the entire object before the object's gone across the line. Now, I can increase sensitivity as well. So if I put this up to around, let's have a see, um, around about 90%, which I've got it to there, that means the align crossing will accept 10% of the target to go across before it triggers. So you increase sensitivity, therefore making it more sensitive, less of the object goes across. I make it less sensitive, it needs more of the object to go across the line before it triggers. However, as I mentioned, it is set to 50% by default, which I'm just going to set that to uh, now. Okay, and then underneath there, we've got target validity. Now, what target validity is doing, it's how many checks it is doing on the actual scene of the object before it triggers the event. So it's basic means it's just going to do a basic check of the basic shapes. However, if I'm still getting triggered the occasional false alarm to do the minimum max size boxes, I can set it to high, higher, or highest. That means it's going to do the most amount of checks of the objects whilst in the scene before it crosses the line. Again, don't forget, the longer the person is actually in the scene before they go across it, uh, the better the chance has got of triggering uh, this event. So I'm just going to enable that line crossing and then click save at the bottom. Bottom right hand corner should get a pop in a minute saying save succeeded. So it's saved those settings now. My line crossing is in effect there. Next box I go across to is my arming schedule. When do I want this actual line crossing to be in effect? So by default, it is set to 24 7. If I wanted to, I could choose to actually just set my line crossing to go in effect at certain times on certain days of the week. Or if I wanted to, I could just simply say, actually, you know what? I want this 24 7. I want it to trigger uh, all the time. So I'm just going to change that up there. Just get that on to full 24 hours. Get that back to there again. Fantastic. And then what I can do, I can just choose to copy that to the rest of the week. Final box there is our linkage method. What do I want the camera to do when this line crossing is triggered? And we've got a few options here. Send an email. So the camera does have the facility to send emails. You do have to configure the email settings in your network settings uh, prior to doing this, but again, the camera can trigger this email out so you can get an email alert. Notify Surveillance Center. This is the most common one people are gonna use. Notifying the Surveillance Center is notifying the Height Connect app. That's the mobile app that you can put on the customer's phone. So someone's gone across that line, that is going to alert the app. If you don't have that ticked, the customer will not get the app alert. So we need to make sure that is ticked. Other things we can do as well is trigger to actually upload uh, the imagery and the footage to a, a memory card or a file transfer protocol, uh, memory stick or something like that. If you wanted to, that option is there as well. Now this camera, because it's got the live guard feature with the strobe light and the audio out, I can choose it to flash the light and give us an audio warning as well so the camera actually speaks out one of the 10 pre-recorded phrases that are built into the camera. Also, this camera has a facility for an alarm output. That's just a dry contact, uh, usually used for trigger barriers and things. But this could be linked to, say, for example, it might be an outdoor floodlight just for the switch to that one, just to turn that feature on or for any other alarm output you may want to do. And then finally, we've got the trigger recording. So if you have put an SD card in there, you want it to trigger recording as well. So I can just save that in there now. Bottom right corner, save succeeded. Now I have got the flashing alarm and the audio warning turned on. To tweak those particular settings, we find these under the basic event section. At the top there, flashing light output. How long does it flash the light for? Pop that to 10 seconds. What's the frequency of the flash? High frequency, medium frequency, low frequency, or just to say permanently on. And then, as always, the schedule to when that's going to be. So again, I could have the light say to only flash at night time uh, because I'm not worried about the light flashing during the daytime, but I still want the line crossing to be triggered. I could do the same thing for the audio alarm as well. So by default on these live guard cameras, there are up to 10 pre-recorded phrases built into the camera. Anything from a siren to danger, please keep away, or just the word welcome, or whatever you want it to actually set to. Um, and then how many times you want it to repeat that phrase. So I can say, actually, just say it once. And then the volume, I'll set to 100%. 
And likewise, I've got my schedule below there. And then I click save. Okay, so that's all set up in there. Now, if I go to my live view, and let's take a look at my live view of the camera now. And as we can see, the blue line is across there now. So what we'll do, we will uh, go and try and trigger this line crossing, and let's just see what happens in the scene. So there we go, as we saw, uh, as I approached the line, I got the green bounding box around me to say that I identified a target. Once I went across that line, the box around myself turned red, and likewise the blue line there of the line also turned red uh, as well, indicating that line had been triggered, and we could see that on the live view display as well. So there we go, hopefully you found that useful, and hopefully that'll help you out in the future when you come to uh, create these uh, line crossings on the hydrogen cameras. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, also, uh, hit that uh, like button. Also, don't forget to uh, tap that bell icon as well. That way, you'll be alerted when we upload any new videos.